Hey, welcome back to Crafting the Cryptic, um, where in response to some comments we had on uh, last Friday's Diabolical Sudoku video, I just wanted to revisit the puzzle halfway through the solve. We don't do this very often, but we're lucky on this channel in that some of the viewers are exception good Sudoku solvers, um, and one of them, Sam Kaplan Lines, uh, has commented a number of times, and you normally find something very interesting. Um, while he's solving the puzzle, and indeed he has again this time. Uh, I'm pretty sure Sam is in the UK team for uh, this year's World Championship coming up. So, as I say, we're fortunate to have the insight of some of the very best solvers in the world. And I thought I'd share with you uh, something he noticed about uh, about this solve. So, um, I've reached this point, and uh, I had to go off and find something uh, over here, I think, to make further progress. Um, but following on from Mark's video last week about uniqueness, um, Sam notices something quite special about the arrangement of fives and nines in the grid at this stage. So I'll, I'll highlight the relevant parts of the grid when I edit, but we're looking in particular at these two cells, these two cells, and this box where we still need to place a five. And I think we're all familiar, or hopefully those of you who follow the channel are familiar with um, uniqueness when it's just dealing with two boxes. But here Sam notices that if we were to have, if the fives were to be in these two positions, in this 3x3 three three box, we have a uniqueness problem again with this solution. Um, now this time it's a little bit harder to see because it sort of travels through this box into this box. But let's ask ourselves the question. Um, let's let's actually go through and do it. I'm going to make. I'm going to just assume this uh, this cell is a five. Okay. What is the effect of that on the puzzle? Well, you can see this this will have to be a nine. This will have to be a five, and these other ones unwind like this. Now I want you to imagine for a moment that this was part of the complete solution to this puzzle. Would this be a valid Sudoku? Well, not not. It wouldn't. Certainly, wouldn't have a unique solution. Um, why do I say that? Because the reason I say that is it's completely valid to um, switch the positions of fives and nines in these three boxes, and you wouldn't affect any any other number at all. So the puzzle clearly has two solutions. Let's let's just prove that to ourselves. Um, so instead of Instead of making this a 5, we'll just make it a 9 instead. And you can see all I've done is reverse the patterns of 5s and 9s now. This won't affect anything else because it's a closed loop of 5s and 9s going around these three 3x3 three three blocks. Um, so really a very, very elegant uh, spot there from Sam. So what does it mean in terms of taking the solution further? Oops, I don't want to do that now. Let's think about what it means. So we had um, a pencil marked 8 in this block at this stage of the solve. Okay, so we, if you spot this, you would now know that there couldn't be a 5 in the final solution in either this position or this position. Because if there is, then you run into the uniqueness problem. We've just showed that whether there's a 5 here or a 5 here, the arrangement of fives and nines then would not be unique in the sense that you could switch them round and create a totally valid alternative solution to this exact puzzle. So we now know there's no five here and no five here in the final solution. So we would actually be able to place a five immediately here. Now because of the pencil marks we can immediately go eight, nine. This uh, unwinds the fives and nines over here and gives us a five here, but you can see actually, even though it's a quite brilliant spot, it doesn't actually progress the solve dramatically further. You still, unfortunately, have to spot the Y wing up at the top there. And if you if you haven't done the puzzle, or if you're not sure about Y wings, then do take a look at the earlier video, and that will explain what you need to spot in order to just resolve a step further in the solve. But I thought this was worth sharing. We've, we've done sort of several videos now on uniqueness, and, but we haven't covered this variation. Uh, it's really quite pretty. 
uh, and can help you to get to the uh, get to the answer on some of these difficult puzzles. So thanks for watching. If you enjoy the channel, please do subscribe. We appreciate it. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.